Welcome to Dorista. I'm Pino Gree, and today I'm talking about my introduction to Evangelion. Let's go! So, when I was first introduced to Evangelion, um, I was about the same age as the main characters. And, you know, it, I was dragged along to some kind of social function. And as things often go, some older person ended up showing me some movies and things, and I saw the first episode. Uh, it was it was a little difficult to see more. Like at that time, the distribution of Japanese animation was really um, wasn't like it is today. And so while it was more widely available to somebody as young as me, I didn't really have access to that sort of stuff yet. So there was a bit of a gap before I saw it again and got to see all of it. And at the time, I was really overwhelmed with the experience of it. I didn't, um, you know, it's the first show that I had seen where kind of teenage characters, people my age, were treated like fully psychological adults who weren't sort of belittled for their social conditions, like, oh, you're just a child, you're just going through a phase. I mean, maybe an individual character here or there was, but the the um, kind of the theme, the way that the story handled it and the narrative expressed itself, they they were allowed to have real problems and real suffering, and not everything was restored. Um, I, th I think I find, even then, I was aware that in life, you know, at the end of the day, when the pro even if the problem is solved, the status quo is not restored. Life is not a sitcom. So, um, and then, you know, a lot of that stuck with me. Uh, it wasn't until later that I really could kind of comprehend what I had seen. Um, you know, the end of the, the show, both the theatrical releases and the television release are kind of famous, um, you know, kind of, they, they mess with people's heads. And I, I had that same sort of funk coming out of it where when I had finally seen the end of it, uh, you know, I walked around for like three or four days just what did I see? Why does everything feel awful? And I guess in my case, that feeling never really left me. Um, but I also didn't start without it. Everything did feel awful. So, you know, I think I really also liked what did stick with me is how the characters both develop, but they develop in a way that always sticks them back into the status quo of themselves which I guess is, in a way, it is like a sitcom, but it's more of like a situational tragedy than comedy life is. So I think mean, many of the characters at the end, when they find their um, own catharsis in their situation, but uh, I think the character that stuck with me the most isn't one of the protagonists, but it's actually the music. Um, even now, just hearing like one or two notes from it, like the timpani of decisive battle, like that dum, 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 dum. Just hearing that is still something that calls up to me those scenes, the tension of them, and um, kind of the underlying emotions, the things that maybe the low frame rate animation and things like that couldn't uh, express. But I mean, that's what the, the light motif is for, to express the underlying meaning my favorite of those is actually um the uh the three ray themes that come up um i think ray is probably the most dynamic and triumphal of the characters and so it's really i think really uh appropriate i think that her themes um transition the most you know ray one is very minimalist just this kind of tense piano chord it sounds like something dingling over an abyss which i guess is appropriate and then the second one is a little bit more filled in and emotive with the violin and then the third one sounds like an alien invasion which if you've gotten to the end is pretty appropriate especially to her as far as the um the human characters of the show one might think that you know 
my Asuka would be my favorite. I mean, she's German, she's angry, blah, blah, blah. But again, it's, it's Ayana Mire, uh, especially given that time of my life. And, you know, she was, I had come over to America and, you know, it wasn't the happiest, easiest integration. I was very isolated and I shared her confusion about what is the meaning of all of this. You know, what, what are we doing here? What does it mean to have a heart and that kind of thing? Oh, and even like other things, you know, mysteriously able to read in German, although that's gotten less and less over time. But the point is, um, it's kind of her arcs and her, um, how could I say, surpassing pessimism that I really, really liked at that younger age. Why do you need to watch it? Well, I mean, there's the entertainment factor. I think by entertainment, people now just mean sensation or spectacle. Sensation used to be kind of a bad word. Um, you know, it wasn't good if something was a sensation. Stop that controller. And, but if you want to look at it a little bit more deeply, one you can find a lot of meaning in the film. Um, a lot of meaning in, you know, what the various characters go through. And I think it's nice to look at the story from kind of the gospel of different characters. We see it mainly from the gospel of Shinji. But if you try to understand it from like the gospel of Asuka or the gospel of Misato, it's, you know, the world revolves in a new way. And I think that's uh, it's something that speaks to all human beings in kind of a baseline level. You know, I was very hesitant to watch the new the reboots, I guess as they're called in English. I didn't, I thought they were just kind of like a cash grab. And then my friends sort of made me watch them. And I was just somewhat surprised to find that it kind of, it holds a little bit true. Um, I have some thoughts about how they tie into the first one, but I need to see the last one to see if they're really true. It has to do with Book and Ray. Um, Book and Ray is the name for, at the beginning of the show, um, Shinji just comes to uh, Tokyo 3, and he sees Ray, like a phantom of Ray, almost like a mirage on the heat of the road. And um, at the end of it, there's uh, another Ray. So these are the bookends of the story. So I have my theory about repeating universes and things like that, um, which seem to follow through with the new movies and Shinji waking up post. Uh, he wakes up after a third impact that he created. But wait a minute, wasn't there a third impact at the first one? Does that explain why the world is different, but there's these remnants of the old impact? Mm, maybe the meeting is generational trauma. Just as kind of a crude uh, punt. But... That's my expectation, is I hope to have that answered. So, I mean, be forewarned that Evangelion is famous for messing with people's heads. It really uh, can, it has some gory scenes. It has some scenes that you can't show on American television that might make people really uncomfortable. But through your trauma, there is uh, ascension, so keep at it. Thank you for watching! I hope you enjoyed this video! If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel! See you in next video!